Hi guys, we're from Cal Poly Pomona Architecture. Um, I'm Francisco Benitez. I'm Joshua Galvin. And we're having a, a brief, we're making this video to make a, it's really just a brief conversation of things that we, we talk about in the classroom learned, and, and, the, and that we learned in our um, environmental controls class with uh, Professor Pablo Laroche. And these things that, these things are, Important. We're, we're, we're talking about, about stuff that we talk uh, amongst you know, ourselves, we're, we're, but also like this needs to be discussed in the realm of the public. I mean, this needs to be outside of the classroom. You know, this is such important, you know, information and and and, and types of ideas we need to expose not just architecture students, not just landscape architecture students, but the public. And that, and that's why we're really making this video is to really be informative and, and to just try to spread the wealth of knowledge that we've learned from from this environmental controls classes. It was a great class and you know we're just gonna jump right into it because you know this is this is really important to us. It is important. I I think it's a, a good place to start is to say that from what we've learned and what we know about architecture, we know that architecture is ideally the machine that puts together the habitat for humanity. Absolutely. And it's it's the driving force. Sometimes that force is is um, and it and this force is not there's no ownership over it there's no sometimes it's society that drives architecture sometimes it's politics sometimes it's a few sometimes it's the many but uh, I think it's fair to say in a place like uh, like the US there's a lot of people have a strong voice in the way their buildings get built and us as future professionals in the field of, of uh, uh, architecture, we we do have a good amount of power to have a, an influence on these things. Um, many of us, I know, many of us are going into the field for different reasons. I mean, we, we are going into architecture for different reasons, but many of us agree that um, building buildings that are or creating buildings that are responsive to to uh, resource usage, uh, carbon um, carbon uh, footprint, and uh, and you know the net zero energy, that whole deal is a big is a big portion of what we're you know what what we're looking for, and and so that's that's where it all it all comes from. Yeah, and, and we want to have this discussion because we noticed in the field of architecture that there happens to be some conflict sometimes in the way, you know, the rhetoric of professionals around architecture is, is discussed and the way things are framed, you know, people join architecture for different reasons, of course, everyone has that right, you know, but we, we tend to hear things about doing architecture decisions that are economically beneficial and towards of capitalism or doing architecture just because it looks pretty or, you know, or, or doing architecture strictly because you're an engineer in an architect's body, you know, and you really want to make sure that everything is structurally sound. But the one voice that we feel is lost right now in that entire discourse is the sustainability element, is that that recognition that this is what's most important right now. And this is where architecture is going and needs to go, whether you know some people like it or not. But it, it, it should be recognized as, as a legitimate you know, conversation, and, and that's why we as, have this. As future architects, you know, myself and yourself, hopefully inspiring to be, um, I, I want to phrase something to you. Why is sustainability so important to you? Why should it be important to the public? Tell us why it's important to you. Sustainability is... I think sustainability, like the word sustainability has to do with with something, with, with people being able to do to do one thing over and over and over without running out of the things that they need to do it. Right, right, right. So that's that's what it is. It's, it's sustainable as in you can keep on doing it because the resources are there, or they you're giving you're giving you're giving it enough time so that those 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 things that you're using up can be regenerated. That thus regenerated uh, the term of you know in regenerative studies you have to you have to be able to manage usage versus production and if you rely on natural systems to produce those resources you have to be able to find a balance between the amount of things that you use 
and how much you use and how much how long it takes for that mm -hmm. to be produced again yeah. so from that from there I think sustainability is is on the it should be on or it is on top of my priorities because I don't I don't want to run out of resources you know I mean, that's that, there are lives wanna, there, yeah. there are lives depend on yeah. you know and so maybe maybe there's a lot of noise about this you know and 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 a lot of people talking about this scholars and everything but I think if it's not if if we don't find a balance maybe our children will, will pay the price maybe our grandchildren will pay the price maybe their children will pay the price but someone's gonna someone along the someone someone's gonna pay the price sooner or later and I think and it looks like it, it might be sooner rather than later that we pay the price so it, not, it might not even be my, our children it might be us that pay the price for that you know one that's one of the things that we saw for example in the, in the documentary we saw um, in our class with Leonardo DiCaprio and oh yeah, that was a great film. And that's yeah, and that's one of the things. Well, you're asking me why is sustainability so important to me? Yeah. I think sustainability is important to me not because I like to hug trees, which I like trees <laughs> by the way. <laughs> But I think it's sustainability is. I mean, it's important to me because I know that there needs to be there needs to be a balance between how much there is and how long it takes you to use it, and how, and how much you're using. You know, and like a, a balance there. That that balance is the core um, reason why I I find sustainability to be so important. Yeah. How about you? Well, it's funny you bring up. Uh, you mentioned you don't love trees. <laughs> uh, I, sustainability is important to me because I because I, I love the world. You know, right. Not necessarily a tree, but I I do it in, in an unconditional way. It's important to me because I really care and like want everyone to live in a good place and when you say that word when you say that statement everyone live in a good condition everyone live prosperous what are you really referring to you're referring to the earth that these people are living on well of course so, i mean for me you know the, the direct the one-to-one -one correlation there is how are we taking care of our environment particularly how are, the, the the main way we make people's lives prosperous if you will is if we make our environment prosperous So when I first got wind of this as a first year architect student a few years back about regenerative studies at Cal Poly and, and you know, environmental control in, in the field of architecture, you know, it really, it got me excited because to me this is important because I'm, I joined architecture to change the world, to make the world a better place, not just for myself, but for you, for the kids out there that, that are living in the street, for the people who are not as privileged, who just happen to be existing on this earth. Maybe they don't have the nicest house designed by the nicest architect in the nicest place. No, but they still need to have a nice earth, a nice habitat, a nice environment to live in. So for me, it, a bit, it's yeah. really important because, you know, I love, I love people and I love this earth and I want all of it to be prosperous. I mean, some people might see that as a tree hugger type of way, but I'm okay with that. Hey, I love trees, you know, but I love Well, I think, it, <laughs> I love it too, yeah. bro. No, what I'm saying here is, you know, perhaps some of this, some... Some of my stand on, on this, and you know why the the reason why I said I don't I'm not particularly a tree hugger is because I don't I don't only find value in loving nature, and I think I think we as our, as architects we have to be careful with with how we portray our uh, the love for what we do why we do it because not a lot of people will find your very valid very valid uh, statement to be appealing enough I know to be appealing yeah. and well, it doesn't well, have yeah, to be yeah, no, it I mean, doesn't have to yeah. be but what I'm saying here is that it there is much more to just loving a tree you know to wanting to do the right thing because of course in the end like you know architecture is a is the machine that that puts together our habitat That's right. and and it has to be from this point on if we want us As a species, now maybe I'm, I'm shooting too high. I don't know, but it, as a species, if you want, if we want to make that that cultural that Maybe. cultural shift, yeah. we have to to create the. We are the only species, as far as I know, as dramatically as we do it, we are the only species that that have the capability to to alter our environment to suit our needs, right? Yeah. 
and if we want to make that if we really want to 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 to, to fulfill the us uh, defining ourselves as an intelligent species intellectual species we have to respond different to our environment we have to to start treating we have to create use architecture as a driving force for creating our habit